What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... <laughs> and then a wheel a laugh. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy and we're back with another video. Diablo 3 Season 30. This is the Crush Seder. Automatic Fist of the Heavens. We have actually got this build up to 130 for speeds. My best time is 255. Now, whether you wish to actually play this kind of build at this kind of level of Paragon and gear at 130 is slightly debatable because you will take a death moderately frequently because it is a little bit squishy. You have to manage the build quite a lot until you actually get your first pile on. From your first pylon, it's an absolute dream to play, very easy, but up until then, there are some mechanical things you do have to worry about. 125 is completely brainless for you. Uh, in the background, I think I've got some 127s, a nice two and a half minute clear on good maps, good pylons, and then a more kind of like three and a half minute clear uh, for rubbish RNG on the map and also not very good RNG on the pylons. Plus, let's jump in and take a look at the build. So we've got Aegis of Valor, we've got five pieces with a Rogue in the cube. We've got the Guardian set on, which is giving us quite a lot of toughness and quite a lot of damage. We've got Convention of Elements in for massive spike damage on Lightning. That is one of the things that you do have to little bit think about. Not massively, but a little bit. Uh, we've got Stone of Jordan, so it doesn't matter what element we take, as long as we match it on the ring, the bracer and the amulet. We've got Squirt's Necklace. Really hard to keep this up without a shield pile on because the horse does move quite fast. It's, I'm quite bad at actually avoiding things um, with this. It is a little kind of difficult to maneuver the horse around. So look, when you get shield pile on, this is up. If you get a lot of slow moving enemies that don't have ranged attacks and you can avoid stuff, then great, more damage. Uh, Stone of Jordan, of course, just adds more damage to us as well. We've got the Norvald set. Now this is kind of like how this whole thing works because as you kill things, you reset the cooldown on the pony. The pony is where you deal your big damage because of the Vigilante belt, because when you do Fist of Heavens automatically, whilst on your pony, you get the bonus damage from the move speed, uh, and the attack speed indicates how often it comes down. Cord of Righteousness in the cube, Dark Light in the cube, Zystone of Vengeance, Legendary Gem for more damage, Made of the Powerful for more damage, again, one, until you kill your first Elite, uh, obviously this isn't really working that hard for you, so that first Elite kill is quite important to get this up and running. And we've got a trapped uh, for more damage as well. You'll have to be kind of close to get this activated or rely on the stun chance from the Zystone of Vengeance. But still, it's a lot of damage. Soul Shard Wise, Essence of Anguish in the weapon. When we deal poison damage, we get 10, uh, 10 seconds of 50% increased damage, which is nice. We also get um, increased move speed, increased cooldown reduction. In the Sliver of Terror, we have got ourselves the, when you've got three or more skills on cooldown, you get 50% lightning damage increase. Cooldowns are increased by 25%, but for each one on cooldown, we take less damage and we deal increased damage. So it's very important we keep all of these skills on cooldown as much as possible so that we can get that 50% lightning bonus and also all the bonuses from everything uh, being on cooldown. In terms of the Essence of Anguish, poison on your weapon is quite important. You can take the Poison Explosion final power. The Poison Explosion does activate poison damage, but I just feel like that drops off a little bit because you, you've got to kill things. We're already under pressure to kill things, I think, with the um, Norvald set, so I think adding a further pressure to that is not going to be particularly helpful. Technically, your fellower can proc the poison damage if they've got a weapon with poison damage, but I just think the most reliable source is poison damage on your own weapon, uh, and that's where we are. I don't have attack speed, sadly, on this weapon. I would like to test that out, have damage percent and attack speed. But trying to get one with poison, attack speed, and damage percent has proven a little bit too difficult. You want Fist of the Heavens damage on your boots and preferably on your shield as well. And then for your helmet, again, some more Fist of Heavens damage. And if you can get some crit chance on here as well, that I think would be beneficial. Crit chance and match elements, as we say. Double crit and elements on your squirts. Damage double crit on your convention of elements. Right, that deals with all of the items. Now, I think as the Paragon goes up, obviously we will get more and more consistent on that 130 and bring the time down and be able to do it without the risk of dying. 
Again, as you get Paragon up and up and up across the course of the season, I do think we'll swap onto Orgild Seth. The Guardians um, at some point will be replaced, but I don't think at 1.6k uh, we're kind of anywhere near that at the moment. Skills wise, Barment targeted. This is just here because it's on a massive cooldown and it just helps us keep up all of our damage buffs. Mr. Heavens Fisher, you can go for Divine Well and that will give you some recovery. We are a little bit naff on recovery in the build, but Fisher just seems to deal a lot more damage. So I like that. And also the Soul Shard giving lightning damage only works with lightning. So you'd have to swap your Soul Shard for like the attack speed and crit chance one. Iron Skin Flash, we're hoping something hits us and we get move speed, which is more damage, because we just we're all about killing. We just want to kill to get ocular circles and to reset our Norvalds. Laws of Hope Wings of Angel, same concept. We are getting some move speed from this. We do actually get some life per second. This does help with recovery. We get 50% damage reduction from Iron Skin. So if you do have these two things active, then you are a lot tankier with a 50% DR and some recovery. We've got Akrat's Champion Prophet, huge armor buff when this is up, and we deal extra damage, and we get a cheat death. When this is up, we are absolutely golden. When it is not, uh, we obviously do feel the lack of damage, lack of armor, and at some points you will be playing with these three things on cooldown, and uh, it, that's where the management of the build comes in. Once you've got a pylon, you're fine. You're going to have enough damage to just bully your way through, whether it's with a power pylon, condi, even a cooldown pylon just means you can have all these abilities like active, do -do 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 -do, spam them, and then you just cheat death, toughness, um, and that, more damage from the move speed abilities as well, which is really good. Of course, a shield pylon is fantastic because with the squirts, that is kind of like another power pylon. Steed Charge Endurance, we just want the length of this increased because we're looking to always be on the horse because that is uh, more and more damage. Heavenly Strength, we need this to wear the Norvald set. We have Finery so that we get more uh, strength for every gem socketed, obviously more Paragon. Guardians, Synergizes, this pumps our strength really high, which is great. Holy Course, 10% increased damage. If we did have the Holy Rune on Fist of the Heavens, this would provide recovery, but because we have the Lightning one, it does not. And then Long Arm of the Law, we extend our duration of Laws of Hope for five seconds, which helps with recovery and with the damage. Right, now, in terms of being in a rift, initially, your main concern is to kill things so that you can get your Steed Charge refreshed. So when you go in, you want to pop your abilities, Iron Skin, Laws of Hope, Akarach Champion, and Bombardment. And then you want to pop the horse, and you're looking to kill stuff, jump in the Ocular Circle, carry on killing stuff and I kind of move through the map a little bit cautiously to begin with and a little bit slowly just so that you can make sure you've got stuff around because the worst thing that can happen is you run into an elite with like shielding or something at the start you pop all your abilities your steed charge you don't kill it and then you're kind of a little bit knackered because you've got to wait for your horse to come back and the manual fist of the heavens just doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as when you're actually on the horsey so that is a little bit of a management Pop your potion because you can get the cool out, cool down triune circle, the blue one. If you hop into that, then that is going to really help you with cooldown for these abilities, which is very important because they are useful. But we do need them on cooldown, of course, as I said earlier, to get the extra damage out of the sliver of terror. Once you have popped your first elite, you're going to get your Bane of the Powerful up. This is going to give you extra damage. So you should get stronger and stronger as the rift goes on. And basically, if you do a 2 minute, 2 minute 30, 1, 2, 7, it's basically going to be dependent on how quickly the game spawns you a pylon and what pylon it is. If the game speeds you, um, gives you a shield pylon immediately, then that's just going to be golden. Condi, going to be golden. Power, going to be golden. The cooldown one's not quite as important early on, but it is still quite useful. And same for speed. Now, again, this all applies on 130, but obviously it's just that little bit tougher to stay alive because the enemies do more damage they've got more health and again it's kind of a little bit on the cusp i think if you're happy to do runs that can go into like maybe four minutes because you get clipped by a grotesque explosion or some really nasty elemental stuff kills you and that doesn't bother you you're just going for the highest 130 that's fine but if you do want the completely chilled out version i'd say 125 is brainless as anything and then 127 you do need a little bit of management but once you've got your first pile on as i say everything is uh, is pretty golden aside from that all you can do is jump in those ocular circles jump in the purple circles for more damage when you pop your potion 
and provided you've got stuff around you'll kill it you'll reset your horse and then you can just kind of go like that now in general if you know your horse is available but you can see that you've only got a little bit a fraction of sliver of cooldown left on like iron skin laws of hope the bombardments the accurate champion just have a little glance before you're pressing your horse if something's very very close to being back on cooldown it might be worthwhile waiting popping the two abilities then hitting the horse rather than uh, hitting the horse because if you do press any other button whilst you're on the horse it will kick you off so you can do your potion on the horse that's fine but if you're on your horse and even if you press Akrat's champion it pops you off like that and then you've got to wait for the cooldown to come back so you just need to manage your cooldowns a little bit because you need the stuff on cooldown third time I'm going to tell you you need the stuff on cooldown for the extra lightning damage um, but these abilities are very powerful and useful so you want their active effects anyway that covers it guys i think i'm going to carry on working on this character a little bit and maybe at some point we can get this up even further in the grs for speeding i'm probably gonna have a little dabble and see how far we can push this uh, again i'm a little concerned the mechanics of this set fall apart a little bit with pushing we might have to take the ring of fire uh, sliver of terror perhaps to try and cheese it that way um but yeah we'll see I've been the Filthy Casual guys, hope you enjoyed the video, good luck in season 30, take it easy, peace.